Now, in this month, for our Sunday services, we'll be looking at the message that is titled, Stir Up the Fire, part one. Let's say it together. Stir Stir up the fire, part one. And I have two foundation scriptures for this morning. One is Luke chapter 12 and verse 49, and the other is Luke chapter 13, verse 20. Luke 12, 49 in New Living Translation says, I have come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. Who was speaking here? Who was speaking? What did he say he has come to do? I am come to set the world on fire. I have come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. The second scripture is Luke chapter 13, verse 20 to 21. And it said, again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like a leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. And in verse 22, oh sorry, 21, okay. Now, brethren, I would like to read to us an excerpt from the letter to the church for the month of August. In this line, it says, Note that God wants the light in us to be put on a candlestick so that everyone will come to the light. As put in Isaiah 63, the scripture says, The Gentiles shall come to thy light and Kings to the brightness of thy rising. May the light in you be turned up so that it can give light to all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I said in that letter, light can be dulled either by reducing its intensity or losing its source of power as illustrated in the parable of the ten virgins. And the parable of the ten virgins was, they were already. The Bible called five of them wise and five of them foolish. Now, what was the distinguishing factor? The five wise took extra oil for their lamps. But the foolish said, no, I think this fuel will be enough for this fire. And so they went out to meet the the bridegroom. The bridegroom delayed his coming. And in the middle of the night, in Matthew chapter 25, the Bible says, And the voice went out loud, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. And then the wise trim up their lamp, they put the extra oil in it, and the foolish said to them, Oh, please, can you give us some of the oil in your lamp? But they said no, so that it will not be insufficient for both of us. You better go and get more oil. And as they went, the bridegroom came. The five wives went in with them, and the door was locked. Brethren, we are living in a time where the oil in the lamps of many is out. If you look at the things that are happening around, the things many used to believe about God... The faithfulness of God, they no longer believe it. Now, instead, brethren are beginning to live as if Jesus never died at all. As if they have never been redeemed. As if they have never been washed. As if Jesus did not die at all. They are crucifying again. Jesus Christ, putting him on the cross or expecting him to go on the cross again. That's the time that we're living in. And so that's the story of the ten virgins. So in this month, God will be having us increase the oil in our lamps. So much so that we can shine brighter and all that are around us will come to the brightness of our light. Even though the light of others are burning downwards, your light will be burning upward. I see God stirring up the fire in you 
this month and all the days of your life, so much so that that heat and that fire that you are carrying will go around everyone in your neighborhood. Do you know that a day is coming when the trumpet will sound, when the bridegroom will come and an end has come to every activity on the earth. And then the saints of God will be called home. So the responsibility that you and I have is to keep our fires on until the point that when the Savior comes, he finds us ready and takes us home. That's why that song, that hymn says, draw me nearer, nearer, nearer to thy precious bleeding side, to the cross where you have died. Draw me nearer. Keep me Keep it in my focus all the time. And that's what all of this month is about. It's a time of revival. Personal revival. When your prayer altar, the fire on your prayer altar, you put it on and trim it up. And I see that happening to somebody this month. If you're that person, let me hear you loud. Amen. Amen. Now, so the title of the message again is Tear Up the Fire, part one. And we have read the foundation scripture. Now, while I was going to prepare this message, I researched into fire to get to know a little bit of fire. And I found there's what is called the fire triangle. The fire triangle. Please listen carefully. For every fire to burn well, three elements are needed. Three elements. The very first one is the fuel. It's fuel that will power the fire. The second one is heat. Say with me, heat. Say heat. The second one is heat. And the third one is oxygen. So, fuel, heat, oxygen must be present in certain proportions. Now listen, here is the beauty of it, of it. When they are present in the particular proportion that will ignite a fire, it does not need any, you don't need any story. Fire just happens. So in that sense, fire is more of an event than a thing. Fire is what? An event than a thing. If you want to have an event, what do you do? You call an event organizer. I need to do this event. I want to celebrate my birthday. And they ask you, what do you want? I want enough food for everybody. I want to make sure that all my friends that I invite, all of them, you know, were able to go around. I want to make sure that everybody is happy. And I have little gifts that I want to give. So the event organizer, what does he do? He says, okay, yeah, I have the list. I have all of this. And they begin to check and begin to check. Now, when all of those lists is complete, what do you have? What do you have? You have an event. You have an event. It's exactly the same way with fire. Fire does not need prayer to burn. Fire does not need labor. Just let there be oxygen in the right proportion. Let there be heat. That will bring in that sparkle. Let there be, uh, what's the third one? Fuel that will keep it burning. If they are there in equal proportion, then you have a fire. Now, I'm going to tell us the significance of these three uh, elements as we go on. Now, Luke 12, 49 tells us the purpose of Jesus on the earth. He said, I have come to, the, to set the world on fire. I have come to ignite a fire on this earth. Now the fire he's talking about here is the supernatural fire. Say to your neighbor, supernatural fire. Supernatural fire. He said, that's my purpose. That's why I came. I have come to the world to set this world on on fire. And of course, John testified of it when he was speaking in Luke chapter 3, verse 16. John answered and said, 
I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He, let's read this part together, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So in the real sense, remember fire is an event. It's not a thing. If you have the elements of fire, this super natural fire in the right proportion, you don't need to pray. This fire will burn. In other words, when Jesus comes back to the earth, all believers should really go home with him. All believers should be raptured together with him. But he said, the fire of some will be quenched. Second Timothy chapter 3, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times, some shall depart from the faith, given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil. They will be high-minded traitors, you know, and so many unthankful, unholy, and gave so many things that will happen. And in 2 Thessalonians, the Bible tells us that there must be, there must be, online the world, there must be a falling away first. Then the man of iniquity will be revealed and then the son of man will come back. So, we are living in a time where fires that Jesus came to set up are being quenched. By who? By the devil. And what does it do? It just blows it out. The Bible calls it seducing spirits. In other words, they will not come rushing at you, no. They will just come gradually. The first thing is, you pray for 15 minutes. Why do you pray? You don't need to pray. Stop praying. And then the prayer altar is dead. Oh, you talk to somebody about Jesus you share your testimony and tell people, no, you don't need it. Stop, stop, stop. Many have never shared one testimony of the faithfulness of God in the church. Because, listen, there's so much to say about this. Acts 1.8, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. So, you are a witness. Say, I'm a witness. I'm a witness. So, Part of the fire that is burning in you is the fire to be a witness. Witness of what? That Jesus is God. That Jesus is the Lord. That God is real. That everything spoken in the word is true. So he goes again and says, Witness, why do you want to talk to somebody about Jesus? It's not necessary. You have enough of your own. Why are you bothering about others? <sighs> And it blows out the fire. So a believer who used to speak in tongues, firebrand, will now tell you, see, I don't, the last time I went to church was, uh, was, uh, was some time ago. And someone will tell you, you know, I used to be a pastor. You know, I used to, I used to lead a church. I used to be an evangelist. You know, when I believed those things, ah, you need to see me there. I was on fire for God. But what happened? The devil blew it out. May your fire not be put out. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, please understand. Jesus said, I have come to set the world on fire. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, there was a rushing mighty wind from heaven and then cloven tongues as of Cloven tongues as of? Cloven tongues as of? A sat on each of them. Just put the fire. Just fire them up. Fire them up. And that's why he told them, do not depart from Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Because that's the fire that will preserve you. That's the fire that will keep you going. That's the fire that will set you up and make you ready. For me, when I will return. And I pray for someone here, your fire shall not be put out. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it said, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Judea is your home. Jerusalem is, no, Jerusalem is your home. Judea is your neighborhood. The Samaria are the other people that are all around you. And utmost part of the earth, the whole world. So your fire is supposed to burn from your own house. Your neighbors, your, your family members should experience it. They should know that this man, there is something different about this woman. There is something different about this man. The fire should go around them and then begin to spread and begin to spread. And I decree that's how your fire will spread. Amen. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4, it describes what happened on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there are appeared unto them, cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat on each of them, and they were filled with what? The Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Just like John said, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is a baptism of fire. Hallelujah. The baptism of of the Holy Ghost is a baptism of fire. You cannot tell me that you have the fire of the Holy Ghost in you and you cannot come to church. You are comfortable staying at home. You cannot tell me that you have the Holy Ghost in you and you are, you are afraid to pray or you are, you, you, are, you are restrained from praying. That your prayer life is burning so low. You can't pray for 10 minutes. You are distracted. You cannot tell me that you have the fire of the Holy Ghost upon you and you cannot study the word. You cannot give yourself to the word. It's a baptism of fire that burns in you. And listen, when fire burns, understand, fire has no respect for anything. When fire burns, tell it, this is a brand new car. He said, I don't know the difference. I just have an assignment. Tell him, this is a brand new house. Ah, don't come near. He said, no, I don't know the difference. Just put enough of the elements, oxygen, fuel, and heat. Put it there and see what that fire will do. It will burn. Fire burns with focus. Please understand, fire burns with focus. When the Holy Ghost is in you, you are a highly focused person. You are like a man or a woman on an assignment. You have no regard for anything else. You just want to do the will of God. I pray for someone here that the fire that Jesus came to set in the wall will burn in you in the name of Jesus. So, if you have not received the Holy Ghost, this is the month to say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Not, not Holy Ghost. Not human ghost. Many are filled with human ghost. And what does this human ghost do? Huh? <laughs> I won't tell you. <laughs> Many are filled with carnality. Many are filled with carnality. They cannot discern. They cannot discern. It says they have eyes they cannot see. They have ears they cannot hear. Their spiritual senses are deadened. That's the time we live in. That's the reality of the time. So let your fire burn. It's the month to seek Personal revival. I'm reading a book by uh, one Duell, Wesley Duell, and it's talking about revival fire.
from the 17th century to the 18th to the 19th. It talks about the revival that happened in the time of Charles Finney. Charles Finney was an evangelist on fire. He had no church. But one of the things that was burning on his mind was to see everyone receive Christ. The whole of California, the whole of, of the places where he lived, what was he doing? He was going from one place, setting up revival meetings, and setting up revival. In fact, there is a town that lumber men lived. About 5,000 lumber men lived in that town alone. Every one of them came under the fire of the Holy Ghost because of what Charles Finney did. One man. With the fire of God burning in him. The whole of that town became known as the, the, the city of fire for God. And here you are, even in your immediate family, your children, the people who live with you, they can't even feel any heat. They don't even know that there's anyone called God. Your children are not saved and you are watching. Remember people living in your household and are, are living like people who have no, no idea of God. Where is the fire? I pray this morning that somebody's heart will be set on fire. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I realized after the apostles received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, certain things began to happen to them. That fire in them, they couldn't contain it. They began to be a witness. Just like the scripture says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in J Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the earth. They, be, they, they, could not, they could not pull back. That fire in them kept them going. Going from one city and to another. And they kept being a witness. And they said something in Acts chapter 6 verse 4. He said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. Now, let me bring to you clearly the elements of a supernatural fire. The three elements, just like you have the three elements in the natural fire, there are three elements that are very important in every supernatural fire. Number one is the power to be a witness. Power to be a, a witness, to be an evangelist, to reach out to your neighbor and to those who are around you. The second word, according to Acts chapter 6 verse 4, is prayer. Give yourselves continually. Give yourselves continually, not sometime, not once a week, not once a month. Continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So these three elements, listen carefully. If you want your fire to remain on till Jesus come, you must be a witness. You must be telling somebody about Jesus. You must be able to stand out there and say, I know somebody who can help you. His name is Jesus. You must be a witness. Number two, your prayer life must be unquestionable. Prayer is what brings down the hand of God to bear on the issues of our life. And the word, the word is what you pray. Praying according to the will of God. Just like the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. This is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So if your prayer must be answered, it must be according to the will of God. You must be Praying down the will of God. But how do you pray the will of God when you don't know the word of God? And that's where many are today. And I pray for somebody that your fire will be lighting up. Amen. This fire will not go out. Amen. Fire is the zeal of the Lord. The zeal of the Lord. Living with a zeal. In our Wednesday uh, teaching series, we Started the series last Wednesday, Living with Passion. How many of us were not here? We're not here. Please go and get the, 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 go online on our Facebook page or somewhere and get the message. And do not miss the rest of the series that's going to come on our Wednesdays. 
living with a passion. So, but here this morning, we're talking about stirring up the fire. In other words, stir up that aspect of your life. Am I a witness? Take a stock. Stir up that aspect of your prayer life. How do I begin to set a prayer life, a prayer altar that will keep me focused on praying? How do I give myself to the word such that the word will be in me always? So these three elements, the power to be a witness, the power of prayer, the power of the word, when they are in you, you don't need to do anything. The fire just keeps burning. And week to week, month to month, as you live perpetually with these three elements focused on them, the fire will keep on burning. Yeah. Somebody's fire will never be put out. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, in all revival fires that were stirred up across the century, there were three elements. These three elements were present. Evangelism, focus on the war, and prayer. The book that I told, told you I was reading about is by Wesley Duell. It's called Revival Fire. And he started talking about the revival from the 17th to 19th century of John Charles Wesley, John and Charles Wesley, those guys turned this world upside down. Charles Finney, George Whitefield, the Azusa Street Revival in 1906, and so many other things you know, that happened in the course of history. Even in the 70s, the fire that broke out in Africa, starting from Nigeria, and all the, the Archbishop Benson, Idahosas, and all of them, and the fire that is, was in them, that it kept spreading all across. You can be that person today that will take that fire and begin to spread it all around. That you are here in this country, you, you didn't come by chance. You came as a missionary. You just have found yourself here. So now, what are you doing to reach out to your Judea? What are you doing about your Samaria? What are you doing about the utmost part of the earth? It's time to wake up and set this fire on and let it keep burning. And I see God's hand come upon my you in Jesus' precious name. So hitherto, and I talked about refocusing our attention in the daily prayer chain. Hitherto, we are focused on prayer and the word. And that's why if you belong to the daily prayer chain, they will have asked you at one point to bring the word and share the word with, you know, with the group so that you can, your word life will be loaded. You can study the word for yourself and then we'll pray. Now, and occasionally we do have evangelism. But going forward, there is a refocusing that we're doing about the daily prayer chain and every one member of this church is going to belong to the daily prayer chain. I hope you have a copy of this. Expanding the horizon of the daily prayer chain. Bring it out. Let's quickly go over it. Expanding the horizon of the daily prayer chain activities. Now, I said in that place, God wants us to live with passion. Passion about what? Passion for his kingdom to bring it home. Passion and care for one another and new converts. The scripture says, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants the kingdom of this world to become his kingdom and that of his Christ. Revelation eleven fifteen. Passion is like the drive that is required to leaven the lump as told by Jesus in the parable of the leaven. I didn't reach that while I was uh, sharing with us. In Luke chapter 13, verse 20 and 21, it's talked about leaven. Now, the Greek word called leaven means burning. Say burning. The Greek word for leaven is the word zeal, which means burning. Burning or zeal or something. But it says zeal. So it means burning. In other words, the kingdom of heaven is like a little leaven that is put in a lump. And gradually it begins to expand itself. Expand itself in all those meals until the whole meal is leavened. So the kingdom of God, the Holy Ghost in you, is not given to you for you. It is given to you to make an impact on the environment where you live. Let's go on with that study. He said, we are amending the daily prayer chain activities by adding weekly evangelism and follow-up of members that are absent from the services. 
new members will continually be added to the different daily prayer chain groups that meet on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday. So we can ensure that all members belong to one daily prayer chain and can be looked after at the daily prayer chain level. Now, the weekly evangelism, this is the mode. On Monday, the Monday group, like we did in June. How many of us were here in June when we did the evangelism by the groups? Okay. So the Monday group is led by our sister, Victoria. And their evangelism time will be Sunday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. Or Monday morning from 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. on the way to work. And it's going to be at the Marlboro train station and the shopping mall. Our uh, Tuesday group is led by Dickness Choma Ebeniza. And their evangelism is Monday evening, 7 to 8 p.m. Or Tuesday morning, 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. And their port of call is Sunridge train station and shopping mall. The Thursday group led by Sister Glamo Aigbehi. Their evening time, their time of evangelism is Wednesday evening, 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Or Thursday morning, 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. And they are at the McKnight train station. The Friday group, group led by Sister Taiwa Guru, will have their evangelism Thursday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. Or Friday morning, 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. And their, their point of call is the McKnight train station and the Superstop. Now, below that I said the objective of this weekly evangelism is for each group to invite their new converts to their daily prayer chain meeting. On no account should the daily prayer chain meeting be cancelled on the ground of evangelism. What to say on the field of evangelism when you get home, read that. But let's go to the one below that, which is weekly follow-up of absent members. Daily prayer chain leaders and ministers are to be on the lookout every Sunday, Wednesdays, or their meeting days for their daily prayer chain members and follow-up of members that are absent. This way, the church members feel connected at another level beyond the direct connection with the church pastors and ministers. At the daily prayer chain meetings, many names of members who have been absent for at least two meetings will be assigned for follow-up, and reports of findings will be sent to the WhatsApp group that will be created for each daily prayer chain. Also, at the daily prayer chain meeting, new converts from the recent Souls Outreach will be prayed for mentioning their names one by one in our prayer to God. Exceptional issues about members of the daily prayer chain activities, which could not be handled at the daily prayer chain level, should be escalated and put in the weekly report. This new arrangement is to ensure that church members who have been absent from the church services for some time are promptly followed up and appropriate action taken. All questions about this amendment should be directed by email to Pastor at Joy Overflow the Church or by text message to that phone number. The effective date for the takeoff of this new arrangement is Monday, August 13, 2018. God bless you as you engage with passion to ensure the success of this new arrangement. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise God. So that's the amendment we are doing to the daily prayer chain, is to make you and I more effective, more focused on those three elements of what? Reaching out, being a witness of prayer of the word. And as we do it, what happens? Week to week, we are on fire for God. We remain on fire. Your spirit is that quick to catch any spiritual issue around you. And your spiritual sensitivity is that alert. And I decree by the mighty hand of God, as you do this from week to week, God's hand shall rest upon you. And his glory shall come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I see God and his mighty hand doing wonders in your life. Now, remember these three elements are so important. Evangelism, evangelism, um, prayer, and the word. They are all tools or weapons that God has given us according to Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to 18. What did he say evangelism is? Your shoe. Can a soldier successfully live without putting his shoes on? The second one is uh, the word of God. He say, and taking with you the, the sword of the Spirit, which is 
the word of God. Can a soldier fight successfully without a sword of the spirit? So you need that sword of the spirit. And then the third one in Ephesians chapter 10, 6 verse 18 is pray. He said, pray all manner of prayer with supplication and intercession for the saints. So by the time you equip yourself, that fire, the devil will come near and it will run away. See, no sensible fly goes near fire. Sir, no sensible fly goes near fire. Everywhere fire is burning, you will see flies and all nonsensical insects, they stay away. Because of the fire of God that shall be burning in you, every stupid insect, every demonic activity going on around will never come near you. And I see that fire burning in you, uh, putting you, putting that zeal of God upon your life in Jesus' precious name. Shall we rise up this morning?